everyone, welcome to this very special edition done with the interim budget and we are here to uh, dissect the budget thread and bear and let's try and understand how the markets reacted, what the markets have read and how they should read today's vision statement. Shall we call it that? It was much a vision statement, right? A uh, vision statement. So, you know, Asha, what is the departure in this budget? The departure in this budget that look interim budgets have happened in the past but all the interim budgets have been compulsorily very populist. This, this was a budget where there was nothing which could be called as anything which was popular, where the basic rules of economics in a sense they were, you know, compromised. You know, uh, a country like India will always have something going right and something going wrong and uh, there's a lot of things going wrong at least in the rural economy. Yeah. That was completely ignored. So from a market standpoint, stability, vision statement, nothing very uh, populist. Very clear that government feels confident in terms of the assumptions of bringing the deficit down. And when you're doing that, that means that you feel that FI25 and the way forward for economy is rather rosy and low, is as rosy and you know robust. So from a market standpoint, this means they are confident. Priority is to keep the economic momentum going, and they will not do anything which, in a sense, which could be termed as popular under the veil of elections. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, we've already been dissecting the budget math, but just to put it into perspective, the FY24 fiscal deficit target was actually revised lower to 5.8%. <coughs> More importantly, for FY25, now the fiscal deficit target is pegged at 5.1%, which is lower than what the lower range of market anticipation was. 52 on the lower end is what the market was actually working with. The cap Apex outlay, that now stands at 3.4% of the GDP for FI25. Uh, like I said, the fiscal def deficit target as well has been revised lower. Gross market borrowing, that's been uh, pegged at almost about 14.13 lakh crore rupees. So net-net, next five years, the government says they're going to see unprecedented development. That's a key messaging for the market. Uh, you know, what with the infrastructure boom that we've already been seeing, the kind of stocks that are flying around, uh, you know, that's a clear hint there. There's also, they're also working towards making India a Vixit Bharat by 2047. This is something that we've been talking about for a while now. We will, of course, dissect what are the sectoral benefits, what stocks stand to benefit, and whether or not there's value on the table right now in these sectors or not in just a short while from now with our experts. Uh, the government is also going to launch a housing scheme to aid the middle class. Now, this is something which was on the table. We reported it to you ahead of the budget itself but this is something that's going to be very very important not just the realty players but this is also going to mean a whole lot for some of the HFCs which are into uh, middle income uh, lending so to speak and the government is also going to follow an approach of including development of growth the priority is going to be to ensure timely adequate financial help to the SME sector and they plan long-term interest-free loan to states for tourism so I think from a market perspective, there are quite a few hints on the sectors where the government focus is going to be for the next five years. Uh, tourism is one, new energy is one yeah. clear focus in terms of where you went, want the you know government balance sheet to move and where the state of the economy is moving. So frankly for me, Aisha, the bond market has got a clear message that fiscal deficit is down, yields will come down. The equity market has a, got a clear message that they are confident of growth and they will continue to uh, you know, spend in terms of expenditure. Uh, so those are the two markets where the messaging I think is very different. But in terms of a uh, real, uh, you know, punch, because equity market as it is was not very bereft of lot of triggers. Saurabh Mukherjee joins us, Manish Dangi, let's say good, good evening to him. And Nilesha has been with us throughout the day. So Manish, I'm going to start with what let's say I just, uh, what our you know, opening comments were. There is more for the bond market and there is less for the equity market. Is that a fair one-line assessment of this year's budget? Both the markets are linked, Nikhil, right? And uh, I mean, uh, equity could benefit from earning expansion or discount yield deflated, deflation. So either of these are linked. Um, but yeah, Prima Fasai, it's a bond budget. You know, we discussed this in the morning also. Uh, lower fiscal deficit, uh, the fiscal impulse this time around is significantly lower after three, four years of a very, very positive impulse. Uh, we are entering in an era where the government at margin actually will actually take away growth instead of uh, inputting growth, so to say. So as such, the global macro is absolutely phenomenal for bonds. So 
uh, government is simply aiding uh, to this uh, otherwise a very benign setup for bonds. And we very likely will see a significant rally in bonds over the next one, two years. Uh, Saurabh, uh, what is good, what is bad in this budget? Do you think it is status quo and it's time to move on? I mean, it's been a busy day for all of us, but do you think tomorrow it's time to just go, st go start again? I think the, the one thing that will stay with me for many years to come is uh, is the Nari Shakti piece. So, you know, we've been writing about it in our in our blogs, but it was intriguing to see over the last three or four days, first the PM, then the FM, then the chief economic advisor talk about it. And then we looked up the numbers. Uh, more women now vote in Indian elections than men. Uh, as per RBI data, women in urban areas have more money in their bank accounts than men. RBI data actually shows there are more women having bank accounts than men. So I think there's a there's a change afoot in the country. The people who run our country have recognized it. And I think what we'll see in the budget after the election and for many years to come is policy will tilt decisively towards women. Uh, as it is, we have more educated women in the country than educated men at all levels of the, of the education system. The best jobs in the country are going to women as well. So that will become a change in the way policymakers deal with the country and people like us will have to wake up and invest more in things where, where, where women are interested, where women pull the, tr pull the trigger. So that's the big theme I will take away. I was very intrigued to see the PM uh, talk about it. The FM uh, spoke about it at length. I think Nikunj will hear more about it uh, in the post-election budget. Stocks like Nestle, Titan, Trent, Rainbow, uh, Medicare are in our portfolio. But we're looking for many more. This, I think, will become a mega theme that will define the budget that we heard about this morning. <clears throat> Well, today, we didn't see much of a reaction on the equity markets. Of course, there were individual stocks reacting to very new specific moves, but that was the case from the word go. But the government now seems very focused on its fiscal consolidation path. FI24, FI25, fiscal deficit has per se. This is an extremely welcome development. Uh, clearly, this government has been on a path of fiscal consolidation. Despite an extremely challenging environment, this has been an environment which has been full of black swans. And in that context, that backdrop, to see the government continue to be on the path of fiscal consolidation, I think is truly welcome. Uh, this is honestly very, very positive for markets, financial markets, the economy, the banking system, as well as for foreign capital. Uh, the fact that the fiscal deficit has already gone below 6% six, below 6 to 5.8% for FY24 and is estimated to be at 5.1% for FY25 is a huge positive. So Manish, uh, let's spend a minute on the bond market effect. If the bond market is going to strengthen, which is that yields, let's say, settles closer to 7 or 6.8 or 6.9, do you think immediately we could see rally in PSU banks? Do you think immediately we could see rally in consumer discretionary and consumer staples? Can we start drawing that parallel, Manish Dangi? No, I mean, uh, basically, a bond math uh, e effect on uh, equity is an adjacent equity, not the distant equity. So discretionary um, or um, anything which is sort of uh, high beta growth um, is necessarily uh, sluggish when bonds are rallying, you know, if I were to sort of look at adjacency, the adjacent to a bond market would be, let's say, very, very colloquially put utility, so to say. So anything which has a bond-like characteristics has um, uh, has sort of a more uh, reasonability and durability to the cash flows would actually get discounted at lower rate. Uh, generally speaking, uh, because tech has become somewhat of a bond proxy, at least internationally and to a certain extent even in India, you know, that could be an adjacent beneficiary, so to say. But I wouldn't sort of bet on uh, sort of uh, this. Uh, I mean, given that, you know, we are entering Nikon in a little bit of a, uh, a private consumption slow lane, you know, some, or, I mean, car sales, CE, uh, everything is sort of in 2 3% right now. Um, it's likely that uh, the effect of lower yields, if eventually lower, uh, better liquidity would reflect in better car sales only sort of eventually but you know it's a second order effect not the first order so the you first know, thing is to place the tlts the long bonds then to utilities and then thereafter of course everything else okay so while uh, you know the subtle messaging is that uh, there is only economics and there is less politics but then i have a contra view right now the rural economy needs help 
right now the rural economy is slowing down looking at the government finances looking at where the balance sheet is moving maybe this budget could have been a forum to perhaps come up with a scheme or a grant to ensure that the rural economy you know comes up I the fm beginners the fm beginner speech by saying that this is not a government that does uh, handouts i think her word was entitlements this is not a government which is focused on entitlement this is a government which wants to create opportunities for the poor rather uh, post the 2019 elections they've been very consistent in that point of view on the messaging that we'll create opportunities we'll not do helicopter drops of cash uh, secondly if you uh, if I, when i did the fiscal maths uh, i'd expected uh, 10 11% capex growth which is what the fm announced and i'd expected that welfare spending will be broadly in the vicinity that she's come up with around 4 trillion so the 4 trillion of welfare spending should be enough uh, 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 to deal with the to deal with uh, nrega pm kisan pm pm awas and so on so there's enough there there's enough there uh, on the on the welfare spending side remember she's also mentioned at least in three areas that post elections the government will encourage lending to poor lending to smes lending to uh, msmes at rates which are which are below market so there seems to be plenty of thinking on the anvil that the government will encourage a whole credit ecosystem to be built around uh, uh, small businesses around low income people uh, and 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 the whole pm awas yojana the gramin version of it that she announced um, uh, is it is a step in that direction so this is more margaret thatcher uh, uh, ronald reagan type thinking that let's give the let, rather than giving fish to the poor let's give them a fishing rod so that they can go off and uh, fend for themselves and i think they'll stick to that that's, that's been their hallmark in the second term very very distinctive uh, attitude to to helping the poor kulja simsim well you must have heard me say this multiple of times so this uh, simsim now has become a large treasure box and on a business channel where treasures are when superstar investors they start in identifying stocks So Prashant Jain, that Kulja Simsim idea is large cap financials. Sunil Singhania, manufacturing and large cap banks. Heritage Foods from uh, Nilesh Shah, followed by Mahindra Holiday and Home First. Oil marketing companies, Patel Engineering. These are some of the ideas from uh, Vijay Kedia. Flip it around with Madhu Sudan Kela. You would hear uh, Purinjyo, Sanjeev Basin, Sandeep Sabarwal. Financials which are in capital market, Ram Dev Ji. संजीव बसीर नाल कोवन जी सी गेल फुटको संदीप सबरवाल वी आई पी मारुति एंड निलेष शाह विच जस्ट मैंशन डी सो दर इज वन नेम मिसिंग हियर एंड विच इज सौरभ मुखर्जी एंड इफ आई हैव टू मेक द ट्रेजर बॉक्स विच से इज खुलजा सिमसिम सौरभ मुखर्जी लेट मी प्ले दैट खुलजा सिमसिम ट्रिक अगेन एज अ चाइल्ड वी प्ले डिट राइट वेन वी एंड द पास कोड फॉर दिस ट्रेजर सौरभ मुखर्जी इज इंडिया सो इन द डिजी लॉकर आई एम गो टू टाइप इंडिया एंड आई एम गुड ओपन द ट्रेजर वॉट डू थिंक विल कम आउट I think firstly, with so many uh, uh, investors, legendary investors giving their giving you their keys to the treasury, I don't think you need one more key. But if you needed one more key, my suggestion will be uh, having a look at Aisha Motors as a play on a both the rural recovery and the Volvo Aisha side of the business, which I think is probably India's best uh, uh, trucks business, CV business now. And on the women's side, on the women's side, we've invested in Rainbow Medicare. Uh, in south india it's a pediatric and maternity chain as i said i think uh, one of the defining themes of the next 5 years will be the rise of indian women and their spending muscle will come to the fore so one woman pick which is rainbow medicare and a pick on on cvs and rural india which is aisha motors disclaimer i am invested in these stocks so are my parents and so are our 9000 clients through our pfs mukherj ji looks like a uh... I need to meet you more often because my sim sim what we have we are at Asian Paints and Pedra Light in it. <laughs> so, so that I don't think you need my sim sim. The FM has already given the green flag on that by saying uh, encouragement for middle class housing. Okay, let's take a break. Stay with us. We'll uh, open the treasure box a bit more when we come back, and more on markets right after this.
how markets have been dissecting <laughs> the budget and what sort of reaction you should see in the days to come. We're still in conversation with Saurabh Mukherjee, Manish Dangi, as well as Nilesh Shah. And just before the break, uh, Saurabh also gave us two stock ideas. The Pitara Open with yes. Kulja Sim Sim as the keyword, or India as the password actually. And those two stock ideas were Rainbow Medicare as well as Aisha Motors. Saurabh, that clearly smacks of uh, contra calls in your portfolio, right? Aisha, you're betting on a rural recovery which hasn't happened yet. So, so two parts to this. Uh, uh, yes, Royal Enfield has had a huge, huge rural following historically, but increasingly, as uh, as Aisha Motors launches, as Royal Enfield launches uh, uh, 600 cc, 450 cc motorbikes, the urban elite are also taking to it. Um, and secondly, the Volvo Aisha trucks business. We reckon the stock market underappreciates just how well the Volvo Aisha trucks business is doing. Uh, it's steadily gaining share at the heaviest end of the CV market. As India's highways get big, bigger and better, the heavy CV market is growing faster than the light CV market. Volvo Aisha is gaining share there. And as the FM said in the budget today, EVs are going to get a big push, uh, especially EV buses are going to get a big push on the other side of the elections. She said state governments will be encouraged, uh, perhaps subsidized to buy more EV buses. Uh, and uh, VCV uh, has set up and already started manufacturing and selling uh, uh, EV buses. So there's the EV business inside BECV, uh, there's the conventional uh, he heavy trucks business inside BECV, the stock market underappreciates this and I, we see that as a play on, on the, the impending private sector capex cycle plus the luxury motorcycle market which I think will do really well as luxury consumption booms in India. So clearly Aisha Motors not just a play on rural recovery but also on urban India and the aspiring Indians. But uh, Nilesh, defence and railway PSUs. They've been market darlings, right, for the last one year. Given that the government focus continues towards defence and railway spends, clearly you've seen that in the CapEx outlay. Do you still see value in defence and railway stocks, even at these lofty, lofty valuations after the run-up that they've had? The business, I still think, has a very long runway of growth. I mean, projects around railways, uh, defence, uh, indigenization of defence, these are very long-term structural growth opportunities and so uh, for individual companies, individual businesses, they will keep growing at a very healthy pace for the foreseeable future. But I agree with you that valuations today are factoring in the near-term to short-term growth prospects. Uh, the valuations are no longer as attractive, valuations are heady. So one has to be extremely careful that either you're buying into them with a very long-term perspective, which means a perspective of at least three to five years, then I think it's, 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 it should be fine. But I think otherwise, from a more short-term perspective, it looks like that a lot of the near-term growth is priced into these stocks. All right. Uh, Manish, identify an investment idea for our viewers, which is non-equity and apart from uh, you know stocks or betting on Saurabh's portfolio or some of the Khulja Simsim stocks, if you have to identify a macro trade for us, from here till election and from election to next one year? Uh, I think uh, there is going to be a risk parity uh, or rather return parity despite uh, uh, basically uh, the simple math is that at 7 quarter, 7.30 of uh, sort of sovereign bond if you buy, at some point in time in next 2-3 years you will be able to exit at 6 or thereabouts. I also think USDs will get to 2-2.5 two, two at some point in time and that essentially means that you will get a holding bill return of 10% or thereabouts. So that's one way to sort of run a duration portfolio and earn 10%. Uh, you can buy uh, a double A centric portfolios today at nine and a half, ten percent with a little bit of a capital gain. It could it could deliver you two, three year return at 10% plus. Um, you could actually do a lot of private private funds are today. Uh, it's a time Nikunj to sort of uh, bet on balance sheet instead of PL. Um, and you sort of are getting very good balance sheets, you know, borrowing at 14, 15, 16 percent right now. A decent A minus triple B plus portfolios, low leverage, um, and you know so those private credit funds today are available anywhere between 14 to 18 percent. Pick one of those funds or a few of them in your portfolio. So uh, you know this is after a very long time in India, a little bit of a Kuwait land uh, that outside of just public equity, you know there is there are far far too many things you know available at sort of double digit returns, you know which every Indian sort of aspires to get in their portfolio. 
Very interesting. Manish, you also think that, you know, further down the line, of course, while it's going to be a big election year, not just for India, but the US as well, that the focus from the finance ministry is going to change to the central bank. You know, the Fed has already hinted at uh, rate cuts not being imminent. But when the cycle does reverse, you think that's going to be the next trigger for the markets? No, absolutely. So rate cuts, are, rate cuts sort of both in US as well as in India. I mean, uh, uh, market hasn't absorbed this news yet. Uh, to a certain extent, you know, it's there in price as far as US is concerned. So in US, what matters, of course, is the terminal rate. And I think that the US terminal Fed rate are going to head to 2% or thereabouts in the next one, two years. I mean, two, two and a half years, so to say. Uh, in India, too, you know, I wouldn't be surprised you get 75 to 100 basis point rate cut over the next 12 to 18 months time. So um, I think uh, there is going to be a, a, you know, macro reversal, so to say, pretty much across the board, uh, across the world, I would say, I, as far as rates are concerned. It's a reversal of 2022's uh, pain, actually, I would say, in the bonds. Uh, Nilesh, other than PSUs, real estate <laughs> was one of the top gainers in the last one year. The FM in her speech today also spoke about housing for all. The government does plan to announce housing for middle class now. Given that focus, how are you looking at the real estate sector, the ancillaries, like, you know, building materials, cement, housing finances, uh, sort of already talked about Asian paints, but anything that comes to your mind? Housing as a business or as a sector uh, presents some really great opportunities. It's an enormous opportunity and businesses which are attached to housing, we think that they are in for a decade-long opportunity of growth. Uh, so mid-income home developers, uh, especially in some of the peripheral areas of the big cities or the tier 2, tier 3 cities, I think have exciting prospects for them. Building material companies, which means all that goes into constructing and, and finishing a house, uh, for them it's a great opportunity. And third and very important are the home financers. Companies, home financers, HFCs who are using technology to go out there and create markets and reach out to essentially uh, borrowers who have earlier not been able to have access to formal finance. Uh, essentially have, have an amazing kind of a growth opportunity going forward. So we believe that housing for all is a brilliant theme. That's the underlying message of this budget as well. And we believe the long-term prospects for home developers, home financers and building material companies are, are only going to get better and better for a very long period of time. Nilesh, Manish, Saurabh, gentlemen, thank you so very much. All right, gentlemen, really appreciate your time. Thank you so very much for joining us on uh, ET Now. And it's just been a hectic day, a marathon day. But like they said, it's a no-harm budget. And tomorrow morning, well, it's going to be back to basics. I think we'll discuss more of FOMC tomorrow and less of budget tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs>